What up, YouTube? Here with a post fight video the Jamal Charlo versus Jose Benavidez fight. Now, before I give y'all the summary of what happened in the fight, I'm going to tell y'all the results first. Jamal Charlo won this fight via unanimous decision. Now, this was a 10 round fight and not a full 12 championship round fight. And I don't know the specific details to the reason why this wasn't for Jamal Charlo's WBC middleweight title. Because Jamal Charlo, I don't know if it had anything to do with him not making the weight limit of 160 pounds. Because this fight was officially ruled a middleweight bout. And that's the division where Jamal Charlo fights at. And he weighed in at 167 pounds. And Jose Benavidez also went above the middleweight weight limit of 160 pounds because Jose Benavidez weighed in at the weigh-ins at 162 pounds. Now, does this indicate a sign of Jamal Charlo possibly moving up to super middleweight? Because that's where more lucrative opponents lie at for Jamal Charlo to have more intriguing and big money fights at instead of him fighting at middleweight and continue, continuing to defend his WBC middleweight title. And there's only one unified middleweight champion as of right now at middleweight, that being Yanibek Ali Makanov when he defeated the former IBF middleweight champion who was undefeated prior to fighting him. And his name is a German fighter by the name of Vincenzo Gulateri. And Ali McAnally isn't that well known amongst the public. He isn't that well known even amongst boxing fans. I would say only the hardcore boxing fans that are really tapped in with the sport of boxing or familiar with Yanibek Ali Makanali. And that's why that title unification bout that can possibly happen between Charlo and Ali Makanali isn't as much of a publicly intriguing bout as a fight with Jamal Charlo and Canelo Alvarez, who's the undisputed super middleweight champion, a Caleb Plant, and there's David Benavidez and Demetrius Andrade as well. And the fight with Jamal Charlo and Jose Benavidez was the co-main event to that super middleweight bout between David Benavidez and Demetrius Andrade. And Jamal Charlo, even though he's never fought outside of junior middleweight and middleweight, his name has been mixed in amongst the top of the super middleweights that I have mentioned before. And him coming in at 167 pounds for this fight and not defending his WBC middleweight title can be an indication of a future move up for Jamal Charlo to super middleweight. We'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen with Jamal Charlo and his future in the sport of boxing because he had a over two-year layoff from being active in the ring. And from this fight, judging from what I saw, he didn't miss a step. He looked sharp in there. He didn't look out of shape. And even though this wasn't a championship full 12-round fight, he still performed like a champion. And Jose Benavidez isn't a bad opponent. And I would say it was the perfect matchup for Jamal Charlo to get in there with a name like Jose Benavidez from having a layoff for as long as he did. And Jose Benavidez, I would rank him amongst the top 20 middleweights 
he's more used to fighting at welterweight and super welterweight and he's also fought as super lightweight as well before and Jose Benavidez has stepped in the ring with the likes of top caliber talent like the current undisputed welterweight champion Terrence Crawford and as well as former super lightweight champion Danny Garcia and Jose Benavidez's only two defeats prior to losing to Jamal Charlo was against those two high-level opponents that he stepped in there with. And how to fight when Jamal Charlo totally outclassed Jose Benavidez in this fight for the entirety of the fight. I had this fight score 99 to 91 in favor of Jamal Charlo, nine rounds to one. And it probably would have went the distance if this fight were to have Jamal Charlo's title on the line because of the way how it was going and because the durability that Jose Benavidez showed in this fight. And Jose Benavidez, as I said, him not having that much experience at competing at middleweight. And when he puts on these few extra pounds, he tends to be able to absorb shots better than he did at super lightweight and at welterweight and super welterweight. Because when he fought Terrence Crawford, he was stopped in the 12th and final round. And in this fight, he was able to go to distance with a bigger guy in Jamal Charlo. And how this fight went, as I said, this was very one-sided. It was a clinic put on by Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo was able to dominate this fight with his jab. And that was able to have Jamal Charlo fight fight at the distance that he wanted the fight to be fought at. He was able to control the range in this fight. He showed good ring generalship skills. And he showed good counterattacks as well to Jose Benavidez's game plan. And Jose Benavidez, he wanted to cut off the ring and close that distance between him and Charlo and have Charlo be stationary and trapped against the ropes. However, Jamal Charlo, he is a good combination puncher and he was able to utilize that skill to neutralize the offensive attack that Jose Benavidez was looking to launch against them because whenever Jose Benavidez would step on the gas pedal, Jamal Charlo would answer fire with fire and he was able to stop Jose Benavidez at his tracks with flurries of shots. And Jose Benavidez, he has, as I said, good durability and he was able to absorb the shots that Jamal Charlo was throwing towards him whenever he had looked to close that gap. And Jamal Charlo's hand speed and his combinations and his ability to place his punches well together and time his opponent and telegraph the offensive attack of his opponent and as well as his power as well was having Jose Benavidez at still and it wouldn't allow Jose Benavidez to step forward to further close that gap and to throw his punches at Jamal Charlo because of Jamal Charlo's well telegraphing ability to read his opponent's attacks and as well as his reflexes and athleticism was also a key factor that helped out Jamal Charlo in this fight and as well as previous fights as well. And as I said, Jamal Charlo, he looked to be in good shape. If this was to be a full championship 12 round fight, he could have easily went the distance. And I'm quite sure for his next fight, 
if he decides to stay at middleweight. Now, I didn't see any post-fight follow-ups when it comes to media press conferences and post-fight interviews that covered the followings of this fight. I didn't hear any words from Jamal Charlo talking about if he wants to stay at middleweight and continue defending his middleweight title that he hasn't defended in his prior fight and it's going on three years now since Jamal Charlo hasn't defended his middleweight title. His name is, as I mentioned before, more in there with the super middleweights. And as I said, him coming close to the super middleweight weight limit instead of the middleweight weight limit could be an indicator of him possibly moving up in his next fight and possibly making his super middleweight debut. Now, there is still intriguing bouts available for Jamal Charlo at middleweight. And if he wants to follow in his twin brother's footsteps of possibly becoming undisputed in his own weight class, then he can do that as well because that would be a heck of an accomplishment for Jamal Charlo and the twins. If Jamal Charlo unifies all the major titles at middleweight, the Charlo twins would be the only ever twin in boxing history to have undisputed titles at their respective weight class, and that would be a good look for the Charlos. Now, Jamel Charlo, he stepped up for Jamal Charlo's first initial offer at challenging Saul Alvarez for the undisputed super middleweight title, and it made more sense for PBC to offer that fight versus Saul Alvarez to the bigger twin, Jamal Charlo, because Jamel has only fought as super welterweight, and he's the current majority unified super welterweight champion at that weight class, and Jamal has more experience fighting at a higher weight class, that being at middleweight, that is more closer in weight to super middleweight, and it was clear that Jamal Charlo has no problem making weight and looking like he's in good tip-top shape being close at the super middleweight weight limit. And he has showed interest even before getting that offer of stepping in, in the ring to challenge Saul Alvarez for the undisputed super middleweight title. And he's had face-offs with former champion Caleb Plant. And he's had shown interest in fighting David Benavidez and Demetrius Andrade, who's a former middleweight champion and a super welterweight champion as well, they've talked about fighting each other in the possible future as well. And any of those fights with either one of those top super middleweights can be an intriguing bout for Jamal Charlo in the future. And as I have said before, Jamal Charlo can have good, intriguing bouts at middleweight. There's a current in the room WBC middleweight champion, Carlos Adames, who's been on a good streak and having his name be recognized amongst the boxing fans. That would be a good fight for the middleweights. And as I had mentioned before, Ali McAnally versus Jamal Charlo for a unified middleweight title bout can be a good challenge for both champions at middleweight as well. And there's also Arislandi Lara, who has been rumored to fight Danny Garcia for the WBA middleweight title. Arislandi Lara is the current WBA middleweight champion and the winner of that fight can fight Jamal Charlo as well and that fight would be a easier fight to make than the other unification middleweight title bout with Charlo and Ali McAnally because Ali McAnally his fights are promoted by top rank while both Charlo and Lara 
are promoted by PBC. And Eris Londi Lara, stylistically speaking and marketably speaking as well, isn't a big money fight for big money fighters like Jamal Charlo. Despite the fact that Jamal Charlo has been inactive for as long as he has been. And Eris Londi Lara doesn't matter what weight class he fights at, whether it be at super welterweight or at middleweight, because he's not that much of a draw and because he has such a difficult style to fight against and he is that highly skilled, that's why no notable opponents that has a name and a reputation amongst the top of the elites in boxing want to have a fight versus Arislandi Lara. However, for the purity of the sport's sake, would be a good look. And as a boxing fan, that fight with Lara and Charlo sounds like a much of an intriguing matchup to see potentially in the future as well. And it would be, I would say, the most challenging and the toughest fight of Jamal Charlo's career because Jamal Charlo, his criticism has been the fact that he hasn't fought the best opponents in his current undefeated pro boxing career. And a fight with a guy like Eris Londi Lara or Carlos Adame, both fights would be a easy big money fight for PBC to make happen because it would be an in-house promotional fight and it would be a good look to kick off that new deal that PBC had signed with Amazon Prime because Showtime Boxing is no longer a thing and PBC had moved their venture to Amazon Prime and they have moved to streaming instead of premium network that we boxing fans and sports fans and the public are used to seeing boxing from. That's the usual platform that we're used to seeing boxing. And now that PBC is following Matchroom and Golden Boy's footsteps in broadcasting their fights on streaming network services, that would be a good way to kick off that new venture for PBC and Prime and as well as a good look for the new year that the sport of boxing is heading towards. And if not, if Jamal Charlo does decide to vacate his middleweight title and move up to super middleweight where there would be a more money-making opportunity fights for him, then that would also be a good look as well. I feel like Jamal Charlo, speaking from my opinion, my feelings at least, is that he has unfinished business at middleweight. And if I was on Jamal Charlo's team, hypothetically speaking, I would suggest that Jamal Charlo looks to unify all the titles at middleweight and it would be a legacy statement making opportunity for Jamal Charlo to do that and it would be a easier quest for Jamal Charlo to conquer the middleweights than to look up to move to a new division at super middleweight where it's more competitive at and him trying to become undisputed champion at super middleweight because he's got to start from scratch if he moves up to that new weight class being super middleweight. And once he accomplishes being a undisputed middleweight champion, then he holds more weight when he moves up to a new weight division at super middleweight. And... Him accomplishing what he accomplished at middleweight, hypothetically speaking, 
if he does decide to stay at middleweight and become undisputed or at least unified at middleweight, then he has a better look heading towards super middleweight and can have bigger and better fights immediately as soon as he moves up to super middleweight versus guys like Demetrius Andrade and Caleb Plant and David Benavidez. And if he's successful at fighting and winning versus names like that, then he can have a shot at being undisputed champion at super middleweight. And that is the potential future for Jamal Charlo. And as I have said, this was a good comeback performance for Jamal Charlo. And that does it for this post-fight video. Y'all let me know what y'all opinions are from this fight that y'all saw. Comment y'all thoughts in the comments. If y'all got a video talking about this fight and y'all got a channel that y'all want me to check out, then I would be more than glad to. And subscribe to this channel and share this content and like this video if you want and hit the links in the description as well to show y'all support for this channel. Anything will be appreciated and I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.